Hi, it's me Dory, and I wanted to chat with you about Japanese mythological character. Oh, hey, did you hear that? A crow just went by. Oh, I like the crows in our neighborhood. I like crows a lot. And crows actually appear in my story, um, my part of the story in the Silk Threads novella collection. You guys know about Silk Threads, right? <clears throat> I wrote a story, a novella, with two other authors writing each of theirs, going into a book that collects these amazing three tales into one of romance, intrigue, adventure, hot sex. Did I mention hot sex? And mythical characters, and strong, beautiful women, and grand romance, and fighting, and a cat, a cute cat, and a historical melodrama that continues from the feudal past, Laura wrote that, a uh, contemporary rom-com, I wrote that, and a science fiction future, Cecilia wrote that. But I wanted to talk to you about some of my characters, and some of my characters are actually based upon actual Japanese folklore and mythological characters. Because my part of the story is kind of like True Blood meets Northern Exposure but set in Japan. And instead of werewolves and vampires, which are Western mythological and folklore characters, I wanted to bring in my beloved creatures from my childhood. So first of all, about Silk Threads, Go to Kickstarter and search, that's the little search sign, for silk threads, silk threads. That's gonna be the easiest. All right. So one of the lead characters is a Tengu. Tengu, T-E-N-G-U. Not Tenga, Tenga is the male whack-off toy. Good thing, but different creature. Though I'm sure some Tengus will use a Tenga all right, <clears throat> so Tengus are originally Japanese mythical characters. There are two different flavors, two different varieties of, of Tengus. One is the red-faced one, and the other is the crow-faced one. The red-faced ones have bright red face with bushy eyebrows and long red noses, and they often have wings. Some that do, some don't. Um, I kind of think that the red-faced one may be a mythical interpretation of, the, of Europeans and rumors of Europeans that were coming through from China and the continent, as well as, you know, so there were these bushy eyebrowed, red faced, large nose creatures in, in the wild, wild west. I mean, that kind of sounds like, you know, red haired, large nose, um, well, Europeans to the Asian mind. That's not the tango I'm talking about. The tango I'm talking about is a crow-headed variety. So ravens. Ravens in Japan are amazing. I mean, ravens everywhere are smart, um, feisty characters. Tangus of the raven variety, typically in Japan, and if you're at all a gamer, you're familiar with these images because um, Japanese mythological characters have been brought into games, a lot of different video games. They have the head of a raven, body of a human being, torso, body, and arms of a human being, raven wings, and raven legs. They are considered remarkable fighters, and they are also oftentimes portrayed as yamabushi. Yamabushi are the fighting um, mystics, religious figures that, that eschew civilization, and oftentimes a mix of Buddhism, Shintoism, um, Taoism, there's a lot of numerology and magic in, in what the Yamabushi do, and they're considered to be uh, amazing warriors. So, um, uh, while I'm an artist, I do not do illustrations, which is why I'm really grateful for Stephanie. Stephanie, um, uh, she's doing the cover art, and 
Stephanie Inagaki, check out her work. And we're also working with other artists. Can't wait to uh, tell you who the other artist is that's doing my portion. But this is my illustration of a tengu. Um, it's not a duck, it's a crow. No insult to the ravens, but yeah. All right, so that's a Tengu. Um, my characters are Tengu-human hybrid, and there might be a connection of my Tengu-human hybrid clan with a certain special ending of Laura's story. Another character that appears, oh my God, this illustration is so bad. Uh, <laughs> kind of embarrassing um yeah oh well so the, another character is the fox some foxes in japan are just four-legged furry animals but some foxes are shapeshifters and they most often shift into beautiful women so if you find yourself walking through the woods alone in japan and a very well-dressed beautiful woman walks up or near you i would hold on to your wallet they're shapeshifters, pickpockets, they're very charming. And they're, yeah, um, so this is my sad attempt. You should see Stephanie's foxes. Oh my God, they're beautiful. And in my story, there may be a certain barkeep. The funny thing is the character named Chio keeps appearing in all three stories. We didn't plan or coordinate that, by the way. So another character, <clears throat> and this one I actually kind of hid. I didn't make it so obvious. But there is a, there's a mythical creature called the Kappa. Kappa, yes. If you've ever ordered sushi and you saw Kappa Maki, it's named after this mythical creature. It is a water demon, and it hangs out in rivers and and ponds, and it has a way of, and mostly fresh water, has a way of like, if you slip into a river, it might be that the little webbed hand of a kappa grabbed you and pulled you in. Kappas are oftentimes drain, um, blamed for causing drownings. Now, kappa have, um, they're, they're bipedal, sometimes quadrupedal, but mostly bipedal. They have the body of like a fat lizard or a turtle. They have a turtle shell on the back, okay? And little turtle webbed feet and the hard turtle beak and human eyes and has like a bald dish-like spot on their head with little hair growing around it, and they have to keep the, the head dish always wet. Now, kappa have a particular fondness for cucumbers. They love cucumbers. In my um, story, there might be a cucumber farmer. Um, they love cucumbers, which is why the kappa maki, or the, the cucumber roll, is named after the water demon kappa because they love cucumbers. Now, these guys are super polite. So they're very, very, very polite. So how to beat a kappa, especially if you don't want to be dragged into the water or fall prey to their trickery, um, is be really polite and bow very low. And if you bow very low, the kappa must bow lower than that because it's etiquette in Japan if you bow you want to bow lower, have your head lower than the other person to show humility. So if you bow really low, the kappa will also bow really low and the water off his head falls off. Okay, so that's how to beat a kappa if you ever meet one in Japan. Now you know. Here is my kappa. He's holding a cucumber. Little webbed feet. That's not a backpack. That's, that's his turtle shell. Okay, and then another character in Japanese folklore is the tanuki. It's often referred to as a raccoon dog, but it's actually a, re a relation to the wolverine. Kind of looks like a raccoon. It's an actual Japanese animal, but the 
Folklore version of it, Tanuki's also a shapeshifter like a fox, except unlike being Foxy Babe. Um, Tanuki turns into fat guy in, and drinks a lot of alcohol. So you will always see a Tanuki trying to get to booze. In Japan, if you see a, a squat animal-like statue in front of a bar with a, a grass hat on it, holding a gourd. The gourd is for um, holding liquor. It's a flask. And the grass hat, is farmer's hat, is a way it tries to, to disguise itself. It's not that good. It's not as good as shape-shifting as the foxes are. And it always has really large balls. Yes, balls, bollocks, nuts, the dangly bits, the, the, um, the, Tanuki are known for having really big balls, tiny penis, big balls, and they can use their balls skin to use, use as a parachute or to carry things. They're quite ridiculous. Here is my sad rendering. Yes, that is an alcohol gourd. That's its tail. Those are the balls. It's a little drunk. And those are some of the characters, and there's more. I'll tell you more about it another time. But support us on the Kickstarter and you'll get to find out all about my imagined creatures. Go to kickstarter.com and go to Silk Threads, support us. Oh yeah, and uh, this red bracelet, thread bracelet, this is one of the uh, backer awards. We have a lot of cool things uh, there and, you know, we've been trying to publish this book through conventional publishing for the last five years. None of the publishers will take us up on it because we don't fit a formula. So we're finally taking it to you. So you can have hot, well-written, entertaining smut. Support us. Love the book. There's a lot of sex in it. A lot of mythical creatures. And if this book does well, I've got book two planned. I'd really like to give these characters more adventure. So thank you.